Don't buy the iPhone 14. There has been a crucial leak regarding a feature that will take place in the iPhone 15. Let's take a closer look at the new iPhone 15 leak that shocked the entire industry. There's no denying it iPhone is by far the most popular and most desirable phone brand in existence. Everybody and their mother either owns or wants an iPhone. Even though they aren't technological marvels in any way, iPhones were always considered to be the best all-around phone in existence, as they offer a phenomenal user experience that is always complemented by a fresh and always relevant design. Do you own an iPhone or would you want to own one? Be sure to give us your thoughts in the comments section down below. Unfortunately, the iPhone brand has been getting a little stale in the past few years. Just take a look at the regular iPhone 13 and the iPhone 14. They're almost completely visually indistinguishable, and their hardware is much the same, with only minor benefits for the latter. Granted, the distinctions between the Pro and the Pro Max series are considerably more noticeable, both in the hardware and the looks department, however, they've still kept the same formula that really doesn't quite excuse updating from the former to the latter. Well, the upcoming iPhone 15 actually does offer a significant step forward in terms of technology used, while offering a fresher design that keeps the effortlessly elegant iPhone formula that we've gotten accustomed to in the past four years. So, let us tackle the question, what are these new revolutionary features of the iPhone 15? One of the most noticeable changes that'll come with the new iPhone 15 concerns its camera, specifically the one found on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max models. The image sensor of the iPhone 15 Pro series will remain the same as the one found in the 14 Pro series. However, the lens will go through a major rework. The iPhone 15 Pro is finally getting a telephoto camera with a variable zoom lens. This new camera lens will also be Apple's first ever optical zoom lens fitted to an iPhone, which means that the photo and video quality will remain extremely high even at the highest levels of zoom. The mechanics behind this are quite simple, as the lens will work similarly to a lens found on professional cameras, such as the Sony a7 III, except for the fact that it'll be integral to the design. This means that the glass inside the lens will actually move back and forth, providing a much wider zoom range, which means that the quality of the photo will remain the same no matter how zoomed in you are. Sony actually pioneered this technology back in 2022 with their Sony Xperia 1.5, and the same technology will be implemented in the iPhone 15 Pro series as Apple uses Sony's lens and sensors. This essentially means that the level of zoom that the iPhone 15 Pro will provide will be considerably better than they currently are, and it'll be more than enough to completely destroy the zoom found on the Samsung S23 Ultra which was a nightmare for the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, as it gave us a fascinating 100x zoom. Seriously, just take a look at the difference between the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the S23 Ultra. Samsung's flagship really puts the iPhone to shame, doesn't it? When it comes to the regular iPhone 15, it too will get a significant boost in terms of camera quality, as it'll finally be getting a 48 megapixel camera. This new sensor will use a new three-stacked sensor that will allow the camera to capture considerably more light, which will in turn significantly improve the overall image quality, especially in low-light situations. Plus, this will also allow us to use the RAW format that's been available on the Pro models exclusively, which therefore means that we'll have a photograph that's much more flexible for editing and fixing up, while also not processing out the RAW quality of the photo itself. While on the topic of processing stuff, the iPhone 15 will be getting a new processor, the highly awaited A17 III nanometers bionic chip, which is a huge change and an extremely welcome one compared to the A16 that is currently utilized in the iPhone 14 Pro. Up until now, the APPL chips were all made using a 5nm manufacturing process, and the A18 will be their first one that uses 3nm. The 3nm process offers more power efficiency. And since the maximum power draw will be limited by the battery size, thermal dissipation, and numerous other factors, we can expect a considerably higher battery life under moderate usage. High usage will give similar amounts of battery life, though. Now, granted, the A17 is reserved for the Pro and Pro Max, whereas the regular iPhone 15 and the iPhone 15 Plus will use the A16 processor from the 13 Pro and Pro Max. 
The chip won't be the only thing that's changed, as the iPhone 15 will now come with lpddr 58 gb RAM, which will both offer more access memory and a higher frequency compared to the lpddr 46 gb RAM that's found in the 14 Pro. LPDDR5 supports higher data rates and large device sizes at lower operating voltages compared to LPDDR4. The new chipset and the added 2 GBs of RAM will allow much better performance while gaming, video editing, photo editing, or just using the phone in general, as the response time will be much faster and it'll be virtually impossible to clog the phone. Another key update will concern the display of the iPhone 15, which will now be considerably larger than the one found on its predecessor, while the bezels surrounding the screen will get considerably smaller than what they currently are, and they'll almost be non-existent. Oh, and probably the biggest step away from other iPhones of the past is the fact that the iPhone 15 is finally getting a USB-C port, which is a first. iPhones have always utilized proprietary connectors, such as the current lighting connector or the giant 30-pin dock port. However, due to EU regulations that have been passed in October last year, these regulations exist so that the total amount of e-waste gets reduced. And despite Apple's protests of how it'll hurt their image and their consumers, they'll finally be transitioning to USB-C. And we say the good riddance to that, as it'll now be much easier to charge your iPhone with regular chargers, so you won't need to carry yours around constantly. Oh, and speaking of charging your phone, the iPhone 15 will be the first iPhone that supports Qi 2 wireless charging, which means that it'll have 15 watts of wireless charging without MagSafe and up to 20 watts with MagSafe. However, with all these updates in the working, a question needs to be asked. What will the price of the iPhone 15 be? Well, you'd be glad to know that the iPhone 15 and its derivatives won't be considerably more expensive than its predecessors. Now, yeah, the price will get a tad higher than what the current asking price of the iPhone 14 is. However, it won't be nearly as noticeable as previous sources told us. The iPhone 15 will actually start from $899, which is $100 more than the iPhone 14. However, due to the added benefits, the price difference is well worth it. The iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max will cost $1,099 and $1,299 respectively, which is $100 to $200 more than their predecessors, making them a very alluring option. The price difference between the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 15 is actually smaller than the one between the iPhone 13 and iPhone 14. And considering how big of a leap forward the iPhone 15 is from the iPhone 14, which was much more similar to its predecessor, we're tempted to say that you should actually completely drop the iPhone 14 series and instead opt for either the 13 or the 15, depending on your budget. Oh, and we know that some of you simply can't wait for the iPhone 15's release. However, we'll have to remind you that the official release of the iPhone 15 is set to be in a little less than two months so you should have a little bit of patience. Unfortunately, there are some issues that are a real bummer, and in our opinion, the biggest one will be the design of the iPhone 15, which will still be majorly unchanged compared to its two predecessors. The Pro models will have bigger lenses on the back, and the colors and the materials used will most likely also be different. However, the overall layout will remain the same, with three lenses at the back neatly arranged in the camera square. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, as it does look really stylish, and it helps iPhone's overall brand image and distinctness, however. This exact layout has been used ever since the iPhone 11 Pro came out, and it has become quite boring to say the least. Furthermore, the regular iPhone 15 won't be getting a third lens on the back, and its layout will remain exactly the same as the one found on the iPhone 13 and iPhone 14, which is a bummer. Seriously, Apple could have done anything to differentiate its new model from the other two, but no, they decided to keep things exactly the same. We have received information that the iPhone 16 will have a different layout on the back. However, it too won't be getting a three camera setup either, which is frankly unacceptable. Also, the front of the iPhone 15 won't be changed much either. The iPhone 15 Pro will get a smaller dynamic island compared to the one found on the iPhone 14 Pro, however. That's hardly worth writing about. The regular iPhone will get an island instead of the notch found on the iPhone 14. However, that was to be expected, as this feature should have been present on the iPhone 14, but still, it's better than nothing. 
Also, the sensor, as we've already mentioned, will remain the same, and it'll only be updated with the iPhone 16 Pro, which means that we'll be stuck with 48 megapixels for the next year and a half. Plus, even though the iPhone 15 will be getting an A17 chip, we're sad to inform you that it, alongside the M3, isn't actually a completely new architecture. They are actually improvements in the manufacturing process so that they can support 3nm nanometer, which is really disappointing, as it won't make the chip nearly as good as we hoped it would be. So essentially we're getting an A16 Plus and an M2 Plus instead of an A17 and M3 processor. Also, the screen will, despite being larger than it currently is, still utilize the same display panel as the one found on the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Pro, which is disappointing to say the least. Sure, the display on those two was crisp and was more than enough for most users, but Apple should have seriously stepped up their game a bit. Oh, and we know that some of you were achingly awaiting the reveal of the famed iPhone Ultra, however. It seems that its release will be delayed until 2024, Either that, or the iPhone Pro Max will just be renamed into the Ultra. Overall, we're glad that the iPhone 15 is getting a substantial update in terms of hardware, as the iPhone 14 did seem to lag behind the competition in that regard, especially in the camera department. Unfortunately, we did expect the design to change a bit more. However, we understand why iPhone decided against doing so. In fact, if you'd like to learn why iPhones always look the same, be sure to check out this video.